This video commences at the point where we've completed the uh, Oracle and the IT Analytics binary installations. I uh, have still on this video the screen that uh, I mentioned was an important reminder that gives us the instructions of actually how to start our Aptar service and then a number of bits of information about how to access that, that environment. Inside this environment, just a little explanation, um, I've got a putty session into our portal server, which in this circumstance is running on a Linux uh, operating system. And then we're going to be using the, the back screen here, which is an RDP session into a, a Windows server, which is where we'll exercise our next sequence, which would be to actually access the portal UI through the browser. So the first thing that we can do is go ahead and having completed that installation, we can go ahead and initiate our command to in Linux to go ahead and start our services. After those services have started, if we wish, we can actually, instead of using the start command, we can actually throw the uh, status flag at that system control. So at this stage, we should now, uh, from any browser that can reach this portal server, we should be able to get connection via uh, the, the uh, URL that Apache is deploying. By default, as the, the reminder note said, its uh, initial installation has us provision to listen on the address that I'm gonna highlight with my cursor here. And as long as that address resolves in your um, known to your browser, you, you would be able to access this portal. Now a hidden secret, for, particularly for initially setting up uh, your connections, is that this uh, portal will also respond, the, the UI, the user interface for the portal, should also reply on the IP address of the portal. So if I open up a browser at this stage and I happen to know that the address for our portal, the IP address is 192.168.2.100 in this kit. Um, the reason that it, I got a cannot connect is because the browser tries to help me by forcing everything to secure socket. And in fact, our initial installation is only provisioned to do port 80 connections. Uh, adding secure socket layer is covered under a, a later discussion. So for validation of my initial installation, um, once I get it to an HTTP connection, we can see that even, even with the IP address of the portal, again, the assumption is that our browser can achieve a connection over port 80 to that IP address, then we're able to get in. And also in this screen behind is what our initial username is and what the initial password is, p at ssw0rd. So let's prove that. Paste in our username and go ahead and type in that password. As usual, navigate through the license agreement. Presumably you agree, submit. First thing that we're prompted to do is uh, given an opportunity to change the password from that default to something that we prefer. So our current password at initial inst installation again is that P capital P at SSW0RD. And I'm gonna set a new password here. And then click change password. And the system I always find this sort of funny. It uh, immediately prompts us to prove that we know what we just did. We can ignore the license usage uh, alert for the moment. I'm gonna go to full screen 
with this. And at this juncture, uh, we have successfully um, installed the NetBackup IT Analytics, and we've we are by default from a cold installation. We're presented with the foundation variation of NetBackup IT Analytics, which means that we are provided with a, a NetBackup uh, focused capability of the tool. Everything else is largely uh, turned off, and um, if, of course, NetBackup IT Analytics can do many, many, many more things than just NetBackup, but without uh, from, from cold installation, uh, without a license added, that's what we'll see as foundation. So even for uh, any, any of the flavors, uh, whether it be a foundation or a protection suite or complete suite, um, one of the things that we're going to discuss through the engine now is how to go ahead and define a data collector and then a policy. So to define our data collector, we begin by going to the admin tab, choosing collector administration, and then we will add a collector. The collector name can be anything that we'd like. Um, it, my personal practice is often I will go ahead and associate the server name underscore DC, for example, just to help give me a reminder of where this data collector is installed but it's not necessary. And to prove that, I'm just going to call this a, a generic uh, a generic title of Windows underscore DC. I'm going to put in a, a, very, a password here of the passcode slash that I'm going to use is a passcode in lowercase. The domain was defined during our installation. And in general, we click OK at this juncture. What now has popped up for us is in a, um, a, the beginnings of the asymmetric encryption process between the portal and the data collector. So the portal has half of that encryption process, and now it is when we've created this data collector, you know, the portal has created a key file that would be applied and installed on the data collector when we do that next. So by default, that key file will be written into my browser's download area. Now optionally, while we're here, um, we can also begin to add policies, a collection policy for um, NetBackup, for example. So policies with the foundation suite, we could add the Veritas products that you see. So we're going to go ahead and add a, a NetBackup policy. The first thing that we'll want to do with a fresh installation is define our master server. Now, whether that master server could be uh, Windows, it could be uh, Linux, it could be an appliance, it could be a, a NetBackup instance on a Flex appliance. Uh, in all cases, uh, what we will do is go ahead and apply our our server master server name. In my kit, uh, that master server is known as NBU master. And I'm going to actually double check that from this screen by opening up my NetBackup console, which happens to also be where I'm using RDP for just sharing, you know, routing to different screens. And I can see that the host name that I want to put in there is nbmaster.lab.local. That's the FQDM name. So we'll go back in to where we were defining our master server. And the IP address inside this, this environment for the master server, 192, 168, 2.90, and we also need to tell uh, the uh, NetBackup IT Analytics what time zone is specified for this environment. Um, so we'll just we'll set that to Eastern Time. I could put a description in if I needed to differentiate this master server from any others. 
by default we can just take everything else as is and click OK. Then what we're going to do, uh, this happens to be a, you probably noticed, it's a Windows data collector. So what we're going to do in this environment is we're going to provision connection inside this, this VMware environment to connect up through SSH or WMI. And because it's, uh, again, a, a Windows environment, if I click on the backward soft, <laughs> backup software location, we actually give the typical hints for where where those those would be that home location would be whether it be Windows or Linux so in this case I'm going to go ahead and paste in the default and then the, the next thing to do is to examine the probes that we are setting up here these first three probes are indicative if you have tape operations this would be your tape library and drive inventory tape inventory and tape drive status you don't have those things you can uncheck them in most cases um, you would have most of the rest of these provisioned uh, if you're not of course using lifecycle policies then you could drop those probes and I'm going to go ahead and uncheck client include and exclude list details at this moment and I think I will see if this one will go as well now at this stage, the last thing that I would need to do would be to put in the uh, credentials for this. Uh, when, when it does the job, the data collector will be accessing this master server um, through a WMI protocol in this case. So um, in this environment, the, the master server is in the Windows Active Directory of lab. And I'm going to go ahead and connect up into that in that in that environment onto that server as the administrator and I'm going to put in the password for that account and I get to repeat it the data collector installation will include a proxy for WMI automatically so routinely I you will typically just leave that as is and at that juncture if I hide our dialogue for the uh, key having been written I would now be able to click OK to save this work in flight I also need to check this so that we are indicating that we really do want to go after this uh, this server you'll notice an opportunity to test connection if I click it at this point, you can certainly do so, it will fail. And the reason for that is this test connection would actually will attempt to make communication to that data collector instance. At this moment, we have not yet installed the data collector with its NIST requisite key file. So it makes no, not surprising, the test fails at this point. However, I can and I will go ahead and save this policy so that once we do our collection, set up our connector, we'll be able to uh, to go for it. So at that juncture now, we what we will be able to do is see, um, I clicked the compute resources probe for the, the lab system, and I clicked the Veritas net backup um, policy. Notice that our collectors, again, as expected, offline at this moment, because we have not actually installed the data collector software. Next video, we'll actually cover doing that.